This is the story of the Muslims of how Judaism got to Southern Arabia. Now, you can take it or leave it, that's whatever you want. The final part of this story is a, is a um, ordeal of fire, where the rabbis compete with some of the local priests or uh, sorcerers or whatever, and uh, prove that Judaism is the correct religion and the people uh, do adopt it. Where is that test by fire taken from in the scripture? You know your scripture. What? You know your scripture. Say that again. Okay. Where is the test by fire taken from in the scripture? Test by fire. Is it Exodus? Oh. No, you know your scripture. Daniel. Oh. Daniel. Daniel has to go. Shadrach, Abdab, water through and Abednego have to go in the fire and prove that they can survive the fire and that God has chosen them against the Persian sort of. Uh, yeah, that's it. You got it. You know it. You see, you've got to get your memory talking. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. It's in the spiritual, I think. So, yeah, that, so, yeah, it's there. And that's basically what this story is uh, is, is based on. This, uh, but there may have been another test like Okay, so that's the end of Assad's life. Basically, he adopts Judaism and brings Judaism to Southern <laughs> Arabia, uh, Yemen, uh, and so on. And, uh, well, we've got some more stories here that continue. And finally, this is the Tuba dynasty, goes on for another century, page 26, about the last Tuba dynasty. When Amr the Tuba dynasty comes to an end, with Amr the Tuba dynasty comes to an end, the succeeding kings were elected by eight of the most powerful barons. By the way, this may be how Judaism also got into uh, Ethiopia, because there are Jews in Ethiopia, they're called Falasha, and in fact, the Israeli legislature just passed a law to bring the last of the 8,000 Falashas to Israel. The reason that, that they brought a lot previously, but the reason they're bringing the last of them, because these were considered to be mixed, uh, mixed Christian and Jewish uh, blood um, groups, and uh, they all want to leave, and they want to come to Israel, but the Israelis were worried about, um, about that situation of who they really were. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of um, um, falashas were probably comes from Palestinian falasha Palestine probably comes from that. A lot of them came earlier, and I, I met lots of them when I was on my archaeological expedition recently there. And most of them are really tremendous citizens. They're in the army. Um, they're in the police force. They're mostly do security work. Every place I went, there was an Ethiopian guard with a machine gun, and. I, he was quite frightening. I mean, I will tell you, I mean, you want to mess with him? You, you, so they had the uh, they had the security services, the private security services, wrapped up as their own private profession. The way I, if you've been up in the Los Angeles airport, you'll see that many of these folks have the uh, the toll takers at the toll booths uh, profession wrapped up. And I don't know if you've noticed, but when you go to the toll booth, many of the people there are from Ethiopia, Somalia, someplace like that, and they have almost a a lock on the market of the toll taking up in the Los Angeles area. Well, in Israel, all over Israel, all the guards, security guards, all around the buildings, every place you go with machine guns, this kind of thing, are usually Ethiopian Jews. Uh, that seems to be one of their favorite uh, professions. So uh, they came, but uh, uh, the point is that this Judaism from Southern Arabia probably got over somehow into Ethiopia. How it got there is only uh, mythological stories can tell, but there are still people there now, thousands of years later, who are claiming this descent and who want to go back to what they consider their homeland. Whether it's a homeland or not, DNA would tell. On the other hand, they consider it a safer place, even with all the terrorism to be, than where they are at the moment, which is a, obviously a pretty difficult circumstance according to them. Now, quickly. So, uh, during the period, the Abyssinians conquered some part of the country, that is the Ethiopians. Abyssinia is the Greek word for Ethiopia. I'm going to keep it to the border of. And Christian viceroys were sent uh, to govern the area. So the area slowly became Christianized. Because Ethiopia had been Christianized by this point by the Byzantines, uh, who were in uh, Constantinople. The last tuba was Dhunuwas. He was a descendant of Asad Khan. So this is the last tuba. He's called Lu Nuas. You'll find his name there on page 26. You have your book, which you should probably try to have or 
Xerox off someone else if you want to uh, save yourself the money and uh, that person's willing to let you uh, be a scringer. Uh, you know, when they paid the money and you didn't, uh, so it's up to you, you know, if you can get them to let you Xerox their book. I wouldn't let you do it for mine since I had to pay all that money out, but uh, it's up to you, it's up to your relation with your friends. Uh, so, he was the last one. He crushed the barons and made himself the monarch of Yemen in an unquestionable manner. He was a fanatical adherent of Judaism. Oh, there you go. There's no way you can get around that. And he wanted, he didn't like the penetration of Christianity now into southern Arabia through the Ethiopian connection. Where the Christian, Ethiopians had also been Christianized at some point in the 3rd or 4th century AD. And the Himyarites flocked, that is, the natives were called Himyarites, flocked to his standard, and out of uh, as much for religious reasons as for hatred of the Ethiopians, Abyssinians. And the, the murder of two, children, two Jewish children gave Dunawath the cause to march into the capital of Christianity in southern Arabia, a town called Najarat. So there was supposedly some sort of uh, intercommunal strife and murder and so on. Place in Southern Arabia.